The difference between microfinance and a bank lies in their scope, because microfinance helps those who really need loans with little to no assets to the client, while a bank gives the client a loan if they have collateral. Microfinance is individual focused, provides money to needy individuals or small businesses that lack access to conventional resources. Microfinance has lower cost of capital relative to risk, no collateral, and offers greater leverage than traditional banks. Some FSIs are non-profit oriented, but these are just an exception, not the rule. Hello traders, this is Igor from Epic Seeger YouTube channel, and today we'll not talk about trading forex and stocks, we'll a little bit go in financial terms. We will try to learn the difference between microfinance and bank. And the first I want to give you some kind of definition. Definition is that the difference between microfinance and bank lies in their scope. Because microfinance helps those who really need loans with little to no assets to the clients, while a bank gives clients a loan if they have the collateral. Microfinance is an individual focus, provide money to need individuals or small businesses that lack access to conventional resources. And microfinance has lower cost of capital relative to risk, no collateral, and greater leverage than traditional banks. Now we know that. And know that uh, microfinance institutions all begin with value capital. Aid organizations, depositors, all banks all borrow their money. They borrow according to their ability in terms of payback shadow, amount and interest rate without going beyond threshold risk, put up all their lenders, the board of directors and management, not breaking regulations set by local banking. Microfinance Bank owns divisions office head by credit officers who have coordinated affairs with community members to deliberate on microfinance institutions products loan. The head office and marketing department are determinants of the loan approval process, which is very often implemented by the marketing department, department operations, credit and product department at the head office, divisional office and staff inclusive. All this stuff we need to talk about, like the SAM MFI, that are not profit-oriented, but these are just an exception, not the norm. Although many MFIs kick off as a non-profit later to small for the profits. Investors are profit-motivated, such as MFI owners. Some fi sometimes socially motivated funds are used by the owners to make investments not always tough. Large MFIs had such as COO, COO and CFO are mindset similar to the managers of the same size banks in the countries like the US or another country. They give shareholders back value by planning to execute plans drafted with the board of directors concerned effort. To achieve this, this need to build a profitable, effective and lasting organization that earns respect and trust from its customers, lenders, workers and rural graders. Some managers do feel concerned about building their countries to create opportunities to their people, while some don't care, putting their interest rates maybe 30% annually. Their motives for profit-making microfinance importance are evident. Looking at other options, customers would opt for MFIs or not existence. These other options could be local money lenders that lend money at an interest rate not less than, look at this, 500% per annum. But now I want just to sum up up to five very important difference when we talk about banks and microfinance. So let me start from the beginning. The first one, the first one, lower cost of capital relative to risks. This can make MFI more lucrative than traditional banks. Most investors put their money in MFI, they're motivated, social, and have minimal return rates if required social standards are met. Far below market interest rate, MFI is borrowed from their lenders, organizations, perhaps part of a large Western bank. MFIs grow by often taking deposits from their customers, motivating them with a huge interest rate of 10% annually on the savings account. Unlike Avdic, in the US, the government of countries where MFIs operate doesn't guarantee these deposits. Deposits are attractive to finance independent because it helps them make provision 
for financing independent of international capital markets. However, there is increased regulation, high cost that often comes with deposits. So this is the first difference. The next difference is no collateral. So lending in traditional commercial banks is not unsecured, but often secured by assets like land, cars, ATC, in contrast, MFI lending usually not secure. The borrower assets are safe even if they fail to pay back their loans, but with a penalty not to lend to such customer again. They may also report such borrowers to community le leaders or lead to such a community social consequences by increasing interest rate and loans by entity community members. So this is because the borrowers are almost poor of the poverty line. Hence, it, it is um, unterrible by MFI investors who are socially inclined or local media. MFI reductions legal system are too feeble to support loan collateral. However, asset lending is not uncommon in MFI when the loan is meant to acquire special assets. So now we have a number three, greater leverage than traditional banks. So very important difference. Microfinance is often at the mercy of central banks compared to other banks in any country they operate. For instance, higher for MFI than other banks is the maximum assets to equity ratio. A low income individual often benefits from the certain percentage of the loans. This also makes them be licensed as MFI instead of bank. MFI loan size average is usually under a certain amount and MFI makes access to capital more accessible for low-income earners compared to other banks. So this is a result of their loser capital requirement. Number four, we have a target market. Because the microfinance finance target market is low-income earners who do not use the bank. For instance, peasant farmers or, or petty traders earn between, between 800 to 5,000 per annum. So however, this doesn't mean they are more generous, knowing fully well that the charge is people higher interest rate than the high income earner in the communities who possess assets can be collateral. The low income individuals give loans relative to their income level are not riskier, provided their income is steady. So these MFI borrowers can also be diligent workers in their businesses, just like other wealthy members of their community. They can also be spurred to give their families opportunities even as they maintain their dignity and reputation in the community. And on the end, we have the group lending. One of the leading methods in MFI is group lending. A group of individuals in the community may secure loans and act as guarantor to another. The idea behind this is if one person could not refund, others have to pay back or they all face the penalty of not getting a loan from microfinance again. The operating costs that uh, accompany this method's implementation yield lesser profits than individual loans. However, it is not without benefit, among which a social pressure also helps the community. So MFI also has many players they partner with, such as crowdfunding, insurance from microinsurance, some sellers of goods to partner with microfinance to boost the financial of their business. So we need to know the major difference between bank and microfinance. But the first thing maybe that I should t talk about that was Definition of commercial banks. Commercial banks as financial institutions are established based on the Banking Regulation Act. So they function solely to accept money and lend money to other customers. So we need to know that all commercial banks are profit oriented and microfinance is not. Microfinance is not profit minded. The activity in microfinance is done more in a group. Each member of the group has savings. Does the microfinance aim at giving a loan to an, any member of the group? The group ensures that money is being used and the group member earns profit from any income-making enterprise they engage in. Every member of the group is entitled to a loan or perhaps get a loan. This, in turn, self-sustain of the group. And unlike a commercial bank, microfinance is the word of registration, dividends, and taxation. So, these were all difference, and I hope that I help people to understand 
this is this can be very tricky finance question but i hope that we make some kind major differences with commercial banks on one side and the microfinance institutions on the other side i hope that i help a little bit thank you a lot and uh, bye bye